Okay, welcome back to Delroy's Garage. Um, this brings us to uh, going to do a clutch adjustment now. Friend Holly has just done a, a service on her uh, Sportster, and uh, she said that she did the clutch adjustment, but wasn't quite sure. So I'm just going to cover it now. I did it the other day on my XR1200 when I did the service, but I didn't film it because it just got a bit long-winded and there's lots of stuff to check. So I just basically checked the clutch. But when we check the book, <clears throat> we find that the clutch pack inside the primary case needs to be adjusted. There's a reason for this and it's to do with heat expansion. You have to have some free play so that the clutch when it expands doesn't effectively lock up and start to slip because there's no free play left. Um, basic principle, air-cooled engines do have more heat expansion than liquid-cooled engines. Liquid-cooled engines uh, their temperature is more controlled with radiators and fans and thermostats. air cooled engines don't have that. They only have these fins here to uh, provide cooling for the engine. So when you're sitting in traffic uh, on a hot day, these engines get hotter and hotter and hotter. So you often have to have uh, tolerances for things to expand. Once the bike's upright, you've got it prepared and in position. You can't do this on the side stand. The reason for that is that there's an oil level in here and if it's on the side stand, Effectively, when you take this cover off, which we're going to do in a second now, uh, the oil will leak out. Uh, but the oil level is below, provided it's upright. So just get the bike nice and upright on a lift, or you can use some blocks or jacks, whatever. So the first thing is to back off the bottle adjuster in here. So we've got a simple clip, take that off. Get the tube of your WD in there. Give that a good screw in that. Roll it round. The purpose of this is to mean that you can just slip that straight down out of the way. Also it lubricates all this, protects it from corroding. This is a pretty uh, uh, abusive area on the bike. All the weather and dirt and cack off your tyre gets on here. And this is only zinc, so over the years this will corrode. So if yours is particularly bad, when this is up in its position, you can cable tie this around the top and the bottom and that will keep the weather out. But this is quite a clean bike. So, so what we're going to do is back all this adjustment off. So it's half inch and nine sixteenth, half inch to hold it still, nine sixteenth. Just crack that. Down. Take the adjuster screw right up out of the way, as far as it will go. Up here, you've got the cable. So pop your hands on there because you're going to have to pull this as you adjust. So back down here, as we adjust this all the way off. Take all this adjustment out completely. We're going to reset it afterwards, but that's the first thing to do. So set all that, take all that out, and if you notice up here, as the adjustments come out, I've pulled this away, and that prevents the cable from dropping off down in the clutch end. We'll just keep that there for now. So now to the clutch. So the first thing we've got to do is get this cover off, but there's a bolt in here that's behind this. So you just need a big 516 down key. We're going to take that foot peg off. I've already just cracked these to make it easier. And this foot peg literally is simplicity itself. You've just got to get that out of the way. And that's it, you don't really have to take it off. You can just drop that out of the way so we've got access. I'm going to pop a cloth under here, just in case there's a little spillage. Now this is an important one now. This casing is held in by Torx heads and these have got a habit of mincing out. These are Torx drives, you can buy these pretty much anywhere. You can't spend too much on these, get decent ones. Now, some of the cheap sets, you only get every other size. And a 25, that used to go, a couple of times I've done this in the past, you put that in, it fits okay, you give it large ones, and then you'll mince these little tiny teeth, and then you've just taken the thread out. And they're pretty fragile, because these are only made out of cheese, I think. So to be honest, you make sure it's a T27. And that, it almost looks too big, but, it goes in nice and tight. So, pop that in there. I'm just gonna loosen those off. Hold the tool nice and straight. It will wobble around in there and there isn't much depth. That doesn't go in by any more than about a mil and a half. So just get them off. Do them at an angle, a cross in a star, so you don't warp it. And this is access. So we take those out. And 
Now the cable itself will have lots of slack, so it's going to hold that on because there's a little spring in there that pushes it off. I'll show you that. Once we've got our cover off, just be careful. Take all the bolts out. Now be careful taking this off because you'll see down inside there's a spring there which we don't want to fall off. Now there's not much leakage there, that's nice and clean. Set it on its front so you don't scratch the casing. Now this rubber seal around here, they always talk about replacing that, but I've never replaced one and I've never had one leak. If it leaks, you can replace it. It says in the book to replace it, but it's never leaked. If it don't leak, don't have to replace it. Now this is the actual adjuster in here. Now this little thing that just lifts out under its own pressure, as you can see it's a hex nut with a spring attached in a hex housing. So that, when it's in place, that won't rotate. And what this has got, if we look inside here, is it's got two shoulders. And that is your adjuster screw there. And that's got two shoulders. So these two shoulders hold that still when you put it on there, and these outer housing hold that still. So when that's inserted, everything is frozen. So to adjust it, we just take this out, and we set it on something clean so it doesn't get any grit on it. We just take a flat bladed screwdriver, and this is the adjustment. We've got all the slack out of the cable, so there's no tension in that cable at all. And we take the screwdriver, and the simple procedure is, you back the screw out until it seats. Not in, this is a popular misconception, you unscrew it, because it's like a hat, if you like, from the inside. You're screwing it, it screws in from the inside. So you effectively screw this out till it seats, nice gentle pressure, and then you screw back in, quarter of a turn, which is probably where it was. You might find that it's different, but that's where it was. And that's your clutch adjustment set. That's the job done. Now we're gonna button it up. Now this is nice and sticky with lots of fresh oil, because we changed it a little while ago. And we've got to just check those flats are in line with the flats on the little screw and that will insert. Now, as you can, as you can see here, <clears throat> these are just not quite aligned. So give it a little jiggle and it'll find its way in. If you have to adjust that screw to get the flats to line up, always err on the side of adjusting it in a little further. Give more slack, not less slack. This is about leaving expansion room for the clutch pack to expand. If you don't leave that expansion room, the clutch pack will have no room to move when it gets hot and it'll start to slip and it'll start to wear your clutch out. So that's all buttoned up. Now around that seal, just so that it seals, what I'm going to do is pop just a little bit of grease. And this is really just to allow the rubber seal to move about and not stick on the metal and slide into position without any metal to rubber resistance. If you lubricate rubber, it slides. I think we all know that one, don't we? So, cover back on. We literally are buttoning up now. As you can see, this goes one way because we've got a notch here for this casting. So that one goes at the bottom. We lift that back up. You'll feel a little bit of spring resistance, you can see there. And that's the spring doing its job, so that's all good. And then let's just pop the screws back in. Get a thread on that one, and on that one. Just take the slack out of them to start with, and we're going to torque these up. It's important to torque them up because this casing is what the clutch bears against. So it must be correct. And we're just, just going to wind them in quick. This is all part of the labour charge that your 250 pound basic service charges you. And if you can master doing this yourself, saving yourself money. So these are just finger tight. So I'm just going to nip those in a star shape so the casing is all the way home. And then another check. One, two, three, four. Six. Now we're going to swap over to a torque wrench. It's important to torque these up because they are 
vital that they're correct pressure. And the torque for these down on the gate is 11 to 14 newton meters. So I'm going to wind that up to about 11 ish. I always think I keep a check on my bikes so I make sure that they're a little bit less than they should be. Otherwise, you mince the thread and you're in a world of hurt. So, quite simply, listen to the torque wrench. You're going to go into this a bit at a time. It's not clicking yet. So torque wrench again. And these should start to click now. There we go. Now, these are now at the correct tightness. Okay. Doesn't hurt when you've ridden the bike for about 25 miles just to tighten these up, check them again. And that's it, buttoned up. Now we've just got to pop this back on. Just a quick one on this. This is a, uh, these bolts live underneath the bike in all the muck and the road derbis. So it doesn't hurt just to pop. A little bit of grease on the end of the bolt. You don't need to lock tight these, you really don't. They're steel into steel. You can just wind them up, give them loads and loads of pressure. I think about 55 foot pound of torque on those, which is huge. I'm just going to whip the other one out because when I did them just now, cracked them off, they were a little bit sticky and dry sounding. Put that back in. Little things like greasing bolts, talking things up right, doing your star pattern just now. All that is just good workshop practice and it's things that save you money in the future. Now there's a little workshop trick for you. You can't get this Allen key in underneath the bike to do this up nice and tight. But what you can do is get a step ring spanner on this head. So you've probably seen this but if not this is how you do it. Pop that on there and just use that as a lever. Give it a couple of big wrist falls. You've got lots more leverage on it. And I'm doing these up to about 55, 60 foot pounds just by the feel of it. And that's fine. Again, they're a long bolt, so you'll soon feel if they've come loose. Job done. We're just going to adjust the cable, the cable slack now. Final job. So we need to unwind this. There's no point in measuring where it was before because you've just adjusted the clutch pack. So this will be in a different place now. So we adjust it back out, watching up here at this level as this will go back into its position. So if you watch that, that will go back into position. And the adjustment is when you pull this cable housing out, you want about two to three mil gap here in this gap that is the correct adjustment that's all the book gives and it works that's a nice adjustable clutch that's fine a little bit less actually that's it and once that's set just whiz the jam nut down or lock nut show the country you're in again 9 16 half inch hold on to that Jam that up nice and tight against there, not too much and, uh, because we WD'd it. That should pop nicely back up into place with a little bit of muscle. There we go. Okay, it's not having it. Grab a handful of that. And again, if your bike goes out in a lot of weather, it doesn't hurt to spray some WD-40 in there and pop a cable tie around the top and around the bottom to keep the weather out of that. And that, people, is your clutch adjusted. Job done. Thanks for watching. Tune in again. Thanks for watching Del Boy's Garage.